Present Kenneth Williams, Derek Nemo, Clement Freud, and Andre Melle in just a minute. And as the minute waltz fades away, here to tell you about it is our chairman, Nicholas Parsons. Thank you very much, and welcome once again to Just a Minute. Just to remind you of the rules of the game, such as they are. I'm going to ask each of them to speak in turn on some unlikely subject which they know nothing about for just a minute without hesitation, without repetition and without deviation. In other words, they mustn't pause, they must stick to the subject and they must keep going. Now let's ask the competitors to do their best and start with the only lady representative we have once again this week, Andre Melly. Andre, doing nothing. Can you try and talk for just a minute on that subject starting now? This is something I love doing, and I'm very good at it. I think the most nothing you can do is to lie on a beach in the boiling sun and roast gently. Or being a tiny little bit ill, not very, just a bit, and being in bed with chocolates and magazines and having people wait on your hand and foot. That's quite good. Then there's a... Uh, uh, <laughs> Derek Nimmo, you have challenged. Why? Well... Hesitation. The hesitation. There was a definite hesitation, <laughs> and as the hesitation is upheld by the chairman, that's one point to Derek Nimmo, who takes over the subject with 38 seconds left, starting now. I lie in a gentle summer meadow, looking up at a cloudless blue sky. The birds are singing, skylarks perhaps. The bees are droning <coughs> through the uh, Kenneth Williams, you challenge why? Oh, it's deviation. Why? We're talking about doing nothing. He's talking about observing birds and bees. <laughs> I consider, Kenneth, that that very clever challenge gains you a point, and of course you have the subject with 27 seconds left, starting now. The subject is paradoxical. It is impossible, of course, to do nothing. Doing implies usage, and of course nothing is impossible to do. <laughs> uh, Clement Freud, you've challenged. Why? Repetition. Of what? He's too much of a doer. <laughs> Well done, Clement Freud. One point to you and 14 seconds left for doing nothing, starting now. In order to do nothing, you must relax every part of your body, disassociate your mind from whatever it is that you had been going to do, and then lie back comfortably and wait for other people to perform all the functions that you might otherwise have... Clement Freud was speaking when the whistle went. That means he gains an another point, which gives him a lead. He has two points at the end of that first round, with Kenny Williams and Derek Nimmo both having one, and Andre Melly yet to score. Clement Freud, your turn to begin. Model making. Just a minute will do for you to talk on that subject starting now. This is something my wife is tremendously against me doing. Many times she has come into the drawing room and said, do not make any models. I particularly deplore this habit of yours. I haven't. I have spent the time writing books, published at ten and sixpence available at all good booksellers. <laughs> Kenneth Williams, why do you challenge? Because it's totally irrelevant. It's deviation. But it's true. It's nothing to do with making models. He's I publishing agree. books at I ten agree. and sixpence. I quite agree, Kenneth, yes. Mm. Clement Freud's books, selling at the publishers, have got nothing to do with model making. So you have the subject with a point, of course, and 41 seconds left for model making starting now. You shouldn't make models and you shouldn't make anybody. You should let them do whatever they want to do of their own free will. <laughs> After all, this is what freedom is about. You shouldn't make... Uh, Andre Miller, you tell Deviation is talking about freedom, not about models. I think you probably need a certain amount of freedom whether you make them or not. So, Kenneth Williams, you still have the subject and you have 32 seconds left starting now. Freedom, not to make people do anything. Freedom, after all, wasn't it, Jeff? Clement Troy. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't got a thing out, had I? <laughs> you got out models a great number of times. No, freedom you came out with sorry, a great number of times. And so Clement Freud has the subject back starting now. A number of toy shops in most big cities in the country sell a kit whereby you can make your own models at home. And for an aeroplane, this is a very handy thing to have. You get the wings, the undercarriage and the wheels and the propeller, also a rubber band and some small metal pins. And by use of this, you can make the most superb small model aeroplane, which many people use 
in gone through your wisdom. <laughs> oh, you're Very can't. nimble, you challenge one. Hesitation. Hesitation, you have a point. You have four seconds for model making starting now. Glue, power preferably of the spirit variety. And Andre Melli, why do you challenge? Hesitation, power preferably. That was the name of the brand, you see. <laughs> Glue pro-preferably. It's a very well-known band. Would you like to say it again, Dagnamo? Glue pro-preferably. It's a very well-known yes. band. I wasn't sure until you repeated it that it was, so Andre has a point, and she has three seconds left for model-making starting now. Tall, thin girls make expert models. So it's a pretty keen game. Clement Freud leading Derek Nimmo by two. Derek Nimmo leading Kenneth Williams. No, he's equal with Kenneth Williams. Kenneth, Hoorah. you're in second place for the first oh, time. Oh, how lovely. At last I've been vindicated. <laughs> you can say that when you win one time. Uh, Andre is one point behind you in fourth place. Um, Kenneth Williams, it's your turn to begin. Osteopathy is the subject. If you'd like to have a little <laughs> think about it and start talking for just a minute now. Osteopathy deals with the study of bones and it is to do with the manipulation of those bones. And I once had one manipulate me and he hit my funny bone. <laughs> and I started laughing. It was really a scream. If you'd been there, you'd have died laughing. Because I started going, you know, oh, ah, ah, ah. I said, and he said, hang on a minute, I've only just touched it. I've not actually manipulated it. What I've got to do is to get the bowl back in the socket. I mean the socket back in the bowl. And by the time we both finished laughing, Thin, the thing didn't get back in at all, so I had to go again. Well, one visit led to a... Uh, Andre Melly, why are you trying? Repetition, because he had to go again. Exactly. Well done, Andre <laughs> Melly. It was quite a repetition of laughter, too, wasn't there? Mm. Anyway, uh, Andre, you have another point, and you have 25 seconds for osteopathy starting now. It's a very difficult subject to study because I imagine you have to know every bone in the body, starting with the toes and working out the legs, the hip bones, pelvis, ribs, all those spare ones, collarbones, skull, and your coccyx and all the vertebrae. <laughs> I believe there are... Uh, Clement Freud, why do you shout? Clement, you have a, a point and you have uh, seven seconds for osteopathy starting now. One of the nicest things about osteopathy is that osteopaths never have people who die on them. They just don't get very well and they're never cured. Uh, Clement Freud has a small lead over Kenneth Williams, who's now in second place. Ah. Who leads Derek Nimmer by one, equal with Andre Melly. Uh, Andre, it's your turn to begin. Backing out of the garage. Would you like to tell us in just 60 seconds how you do that starting now? The most important thing is to open the garage doors first. Then see that there isn't a rockery or a flower bed or a 20-foot drop just beyond the doors. Then you get into the car and see that the car is in neutral. Turn the engine on. Derek Miller, you challenge. Hesitation. Hesitation, Wait, uh, indeed. I'm waiting for the engine to warm up. <laughs> A clever try, Andre, but alas, too late. Um, the engine didn't fire quick enough for you. 42 seconds, Derek Nimmo, for backing out of the garage starting now. Well, I usually crawl out backwards, actually. I usually find it more convenient that way. What I do is I take, row my trousers up, do you see? Get down on my hands and knees and shuffle gently towards the door. I hold a mirror in my right hand so I can see which way I'm going. And I hold a torch in my left hand so I can see if it's a, ni a dark night. Which... Uh, Andre Mellick. Yeah, hesitation. Hesitation, indeed, yes. Mm. This clever idea... Uh, of 22 seconds for backing out of the garage starting now. Once in reverse, you look into the driving mirror, slowly... Derek Nimmer, why do you challenge? Uh, repetition, she's looked in it twice. <laughs> I don't you remember... Look in your at, no, no, she looked in to see if the doors were open a moment ago. Yes, I, I don't think she has actually repeated the thing really, truly. So it is 18 seconds left for Andre Melli with another point. Backing out of the garage, Andre, starting now. I let my foot very slowly come up from the clutch and accelerate a teeny weeny bit, seeing that... Clement Roy, why did you Hesitation. Uh, yes, there was. She was getting more than hesitating, rather slow, which is... Well, the... you can't do it quickly. I know, I know, but uh, <laughs> there comes a point when a very slow speech becomes a hesitation. I grant it to Clement Roy with ten seconds for backing out of the garage starting now. Many instructors say that you must back out of a garage slowly. I've always thought this was a great mistake because the faster you go into a main road... Yeah, uh, Andre Mellon. Hesitation. Hesitation, indeed. You have three <laughs> seconds for backing out of the garage still starting now. Turn on your right lock and quickly reverse.
Derek Nimmo, your turn to begin. Useless household gadgets. That's the subject, Derek. Are you writing it down? Yeah. Right. Think a second and then start now. Sorry, I'm, I'm trying to write it down. I'm oh, yes, I'm so sorry. Yeah, yeah, wrong, I've written it wrong. I spelt it wrongly, you see. U S T. Well, that's D yes. for a start, isn't it? Yes. Right. Now, I'm already prepared. Right. All right. Derek Nimmer has written down useless household gadgets and he's going to try and talk about it for 60 seconds, starting now. These are the sort of things that when you go to big exhibitions at places like Olympia and Earl's Court, you're always finding displayed by very capable people in white clothes and they hold them up and say, look, this is a marvellous thing for turning an apple into a little flower. Um, Kenneth Williams. Hesitation. Hesitation, indeed. Kenneth, can you talk for the next 46 seconds on useless, sorry, useless household gadgets starting now? Useless household gadgets obviously are those ones which don't work when you try them out in the practical sense of try out. Clement <laughs> <laughs> Freud, you challenge why? Oh, it does make me laugh. <laughs> it makes us laugh too. Clement <laughs> Freud, you challenge? Yes. Why? The lot. I mean, hesitation <laughs> and repetition. All right, hesitation, deviation and repetition. I know, not repetition, but anyway. Uh, you have a point, indeed, Clement Freud. You have um, 37 seconds for useless household gadgets starting now. The two most useless gadgets I've ever come across was a potato peeler which did not peel potatoes and a tin opener which failed to perform that simple function because it had no spear that pierced the metal as it was meant to do by the designer. But... Derek Nimmer, why do you challenge? Well, he's going so slow, so slow in arts hesitation. No, I don't. <laughs> No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Kenneth Williams, I must tell you, you won't get any points at all unless you keep your hand on that little buzzer thing. Oh, sorry, yeah, I wouldn't get it. <laughs> I got so worried during that thing. Anyway, no, Clement Freud, I don't think you were going slow on this occasion, so you have another point, and you have 22 seconds left for useless household gadgets starting now. There's not at the moment a shop in any town in this country which specialises in useless household gadgets. Every shop seems to take a fair uh, share. Kenneth Williams, you chance. Deviation is boring, completely boring. <laughs> It may be boring, but quickly think of a better challenge, otherwise you don't get it. Oh, I can't! <laughs> boring is not been the game, alas. I'm afraid oh, all that sorry. happens is Clement Freud has another point, and he has 14 oh. seconds for useless household gadgets starting now. Hot scourers that have no emery upon them, wallpaper that does not adhere to walls, a paintbrush that has no bristles. Uh, Andre Melly, why do you challenge? I don't think wallpaper's a gadget. Oh, deviation. A... Very clever. Mm. Well done, Andre Melly. A point to you, and there are six seconds for useless household gadgets starting now. I'm left handed, so nearly all the gadgets are absolutely useless for me. <laughs> Though I do believe a shop is just. Ho Right, um, Andre Melly has another point there. Let me write it down. So, um, unfortunately, Clement Freud has just overtaken her. He now is two points ahead of Andre. <laughs> Clement Freud, why do you challenge? What do you mean, unfortunately? Because... <laughs> I'll tell you exactly what I mean, Clement. You see, I'm a naturally chivalrous person. There's only one woman here against three men, so I rather must admit I like to see the woman occasionally win. And it hasn't happened yet. You mean you're biased? Yes. <laughs> I'm more power to your elbow. <laughs> and I don't want to take my elbow to your office. <laughs> Clement Freud has a small lead over Andre Melly, and uh, Kenneth Williams is third, Derek Nemo's one point behind fourth. Oh, I know, we'll have a penalty on this round. And, um, yes, because Clement Freud is going to start. That's a very good reason for having a penalty, because <laughs> he's doing jolly well. The penalty is the word and. They must not, during this round, mention the word and. The subject is anniversaries, Clement Freud, and you begin now. Anniversaries are occasions upon which you come up to a date which you've come up to before. There are a lot of dates. Andre Melly, you challenge one. Repetition, if you've come up to it before. Yes, indeed. Well done, Andre Melly. You have another point. You have 52 seconds for anniversaries. You mustn't mention the word and, and you begin now. Wedding anniversaries have different... Um, oh. <laughs> Derek Nemo, you Hesitation. challenge. Hesitation, indeed. Anniversaries, no ands, Derek, starting now. The and is, or the way the interesting mountains that go right around the sea, because, you see, if you want to go around them, sometimes it doesn't... Uh, Kenneth Williams, why do you challenge? Well, what's the and he's got to do with anniversaries? I oh, Nicholas, agreed. come, you knew very well why I was challenging. <laughs> deviation. I know, but the general public wish to hear as well. Oh, deviation. All right, you've established your point. And you've gained a point... I once you... spent a birthday in the end. Oh! <laughs> very happy anniversary it was, too. I've never been well, there well, it's a bit late now to spend your birthday, unfortunately, Derek, because I've already awarded a point to Kenneth Williams, and we can't take them back. There are 42 seconds left for <laughs> Kenneth Williams to talk. 
about anniversaries with no ands. Kenneth, starting now. Anniversaries are the celebrating of events, of course, with one year in between. Matha King, Lady Smith, and... <laughs> oh. <laughs> Clement Freud. Yes, indeed. And, and so anniversaries, Clement, and there are 30, 29 seconds left starting now. Andrea, who is a friend of mine, lives in Andover, <laughs> spent her anniversaries frequently in Andorra, which is an ideal place for celebrating this song. Sort of occasion. Andrea is a girl of 19 who, when she is 20, will have an absolutely super day and a cake baked by what? Uh, Andre Melly, why? And a cake. Oh, yes! <laughs> and I think you're all listening so hard for the ands, you missed the hesitation as well. But anyway, Andre, you have another point. You have nine seconds for anniversaries, no ands, starting now. Birthdays are the kind of anniversaries which are celebrated most. Your first, then your second, your third, fourth. <laughs> Clement Freud. Repetition of uh, anniversaries. Yes, yes, what a pity, Andre. You have another point, Clement Freud. You have one second for anniversaries starting now. Cakes, buns. <laughs> So Anniversaries has put Clement Freud with another anniversary, in other words, he's kept the lead. 14 points, I think, over Andre Melly, who's second place, Kenneth Williams third, and Derek Nimmo still trailing a little. Kenneth Williams, your turn to talk. And the subject, which is probably something you can go very well about, talking big. <laughs> talk big if you can, for 60 seconds, Derek, starting now. Talk big means really like walk big, and I walk big, and I talk big. I mean, you've got to. It's all apropos of the image you have inside yourself, so that comes out in your conversation. Some people can be minuscule. What are you moving my hand? <laughs> oh, sorry. Well, he was pushing my hand. Some people talk. <laughs> I think hesitation, deviation, and repetition. Actually. Well, unfortunately, as the game is in progress, whatever happens, I've got to grant it to you, Derek. I quite agree. So it is. We want to say something, Mister. Let Kenneth have it because it was an accident. Producer. Our producer has signalled to me that it was an accident. So Kenneth Williams has had it. I have been. Do you mean to say that Clement Freud didn't know he was holding his hand? <laughs> We thought that they were holding hands. Our producer, who has the final judge, considers it was an accident that they were holding hands. <laughs> so... We should go on holding hands. So they could go on holding hands. We are oh. holding ours on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> I must point out they are sitting next to each other. Um, <laughs> otherwise it would be very devious. There are... <laughs> There are no points awarded. There are 42 seconds left for Talking Big, Kenneth Williams, starting now. Talking Big is largely the result of psychological thinking. You see, the way you think of yourself is the way you will talk of yourself. Take Mao Zedong, he swam right the way up the Yangtze, according to the Chinese newspapers. But um, that, that's what I mean. You see, it makes you feel. If you feel big, you can talk big, you can act big, you uh, can Andre be Mary, big. Why do you... Repetition. Yes, a lot of big. Oh, lots of big, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Andre, you have a point, and, um, and you've gained a point as well, and you have 37 seconds for talking big. <laughs> Will you two stop holding hands and let's get on with the game? <laughs> Andre Melly, would you like to talk for 37 seconds on talking big starting now? Talking big means swanking or blowing your own trumpet about things you've done and things you think you are and what you want to do in the future. And <laughs> Derek Memo, you challenge. Hesitation. Hesitation, Derek. Talking big, starting now. I want... Andre Mello, you challenge. Hesitation. Hesitation, you have a point, Andre. <laughs> Three seconds left, talking big, starting now. It's better if you're talking big to have a very large mouth with which to do it. <laughs> Andre's talking big has taken her one point behind Clement Freud, who's still in the lead, and Derek Nemo and Kenneth Williams are both still trailing a little. Andre Mello. Your turn to begin. Perhaps you can jump into the lead on this one. The au pair girl, starting now. The trouble with au pair girls is that they very seldom speak the same language as you do, which makes living with them rather complicated. They're often very pretty, sometimes Swedish, perhaps Danish, Italian, French, young as a rule, and they come to England to study English and they have to go uh, to classes and help. <laughs> Clement Freud. Hesitation. You came to our help because of a hesitation. Clement Freud, you have 40 seconds for the au pair girl, starting now. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, 
I'm sorry. That wasn't fair. Oh, it was lovely. I thought it was lovely. <laughs> I'm glad you appreciate my jokes, Ken. <laughs> I appreciate yours as well. I think it's only fair to start that particular phrase again. <laughs> but I will still say it. Uh, you have 40 seconds left. Clement Freud, starting now. Au pair is French for to the pair, which is a very good description of a girl because invariably you don't get one. She has an ugly friend who phones up and to whom she phones reversing the telephone charges. They come into this country ostensibly to look after your children or do the household chores and many of them do come from foreign countries and try and learn English or... Uh, Andre Melly, which has hesitation. hesitation indeed. Andre, you have the au pair girl back with you. <laughs> and um, you have 13 and a half seconds left starting now. It's always rather vague as to what they're expected to do. They think they should have a nice room with a tele... Clement Freud, why are you challenged? Deviation. Why? She's not said anything. She's being vague. She's it's talking about the au pair girl oh. who expected that hey. she should have a nice room. Andre, I'm with hey. you. The au pair girls always expect a nice room. You have eight seconds for the au pair girl starting now. They're like a television set. Perhaps they look after your children for a bit and occasionally do a bit of washing up. And uh, Derek Nimmo, you challenge why? Why? No, there was no hesitation. Oh. No, indeed not. No, the two <laughs> seconds left, Andre, for the au pair girl starting now. Nanette or Carla. Andre Melly blanched when I gave her the subject, but in spite of that, it's taken her into the lead with two points ahead of Clement Freud, and Derek Nimmo and Kenneth Williams are still trailing just a little. Uh, Derek Nimmo, it is your turn to begin. Punctuality, a thing all actors, I think, have difficulty with, but would you talk, if you can, for just a minute, starting now? Punctuality means arriving at the right moment at the right time. It is indeed something which I have great difficulty in managing to perform. I generally arrive a little late, I'm ashamed to say. But I would like to be punctual. I would like to be always arriving at the right moment. You know, one of the funny and extraordinary things about life is when you get off a little trolley bus in Glasgow. <laughs> and you suddenly... Andre Mary, why do you shout? Deviation. Why? Uh, because he's getting off a trolley bus in Glasgow. Exactly. And that but he was on time. <laughs> Trolley buses in Glasgow are never on time because I was born in Glasgow. I know Glasgow very well indeed. They're always behind time, so Andre has another point. <laughs> 35 seconds left, Andre, starting now. To be punctual if you're an actor and working in the theatre is quite difficult because you have to arrive 30 <clears throat> minutes before... Derek Nimmer, you challenge why? Well, because she's, she's not an actor, she's an actress, you see. Deviation. <laughs> ah, yes. But sometimes one often says inclusively the actors were good, meaning the whole cast. It includes the ladies as well. So, Andre, you have 30 seconds for punctuality starting now. 30 minutes before the curtain goes up. And, in fact, this means 35 minutes before, which is always very confusing. Then you're at the... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Derek Newman. Hesitation. Hesitation, indeed. You have the subject with 20 seconds left for punctuality starting now. I synchronise my watch with my friend and I board my... Glaswegian trolley bus. It is eight o'clock by my watch. Precisely, exactly eight o'clock. Uh, Andre Melly, why do you... Repetition exactly is the same as precisely. No, it's a different word altogether. It's a <laughs> different word. I don't think that's uh, right. I oh, mean... It, yeah, it's a synonym, isn't repetition? Well done, Kenneth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. done. But as it's a different word, I can't give you repetition. I don't think within the context of the game. Derek has another point. He has ten seconds left for punctuality starting now. Did you mean to meet me here at this precise moment, I said? Of course I did. Of course I did. <laughs> it's his uncle, do you see? Yes, I, and I look at my watch. <laughs> Lovely. Oh, that is good. This is <laughs> well, I'll work upwards in giving the final result. Um, I won't give the actual points. It might embarrass some people. But Kenneth Williams <laughs> was, alas, just in fourth place. But I tried, didn't I? I had a good try. <laughs> You, were you very... can't say I wasn't game. No, as a chairman, <laughs> as chairman, you were very trying on occasion. Thank you. And sitting next to Clement Freud, you were very game on occasion. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're intrepid, you are. <laughs> Derek Nemo has gone definitely into third place. He's a little way behind Clement Freud, who is in second place. And for the first time, we've had our only lady challenger win. And so it's wonderful congratulations to Andre Melly. The chairman of Just a Minute was Nicholas Parsons. 
The program's devised by Ian Messiter and produced by David Hash. Thank <laughs> you.